Hello all. Thank you for joining us for the uh, FB Live on World Albinism Day Awareness Chat. My self, I am Dr. Tanmay Deshpande. I am a clinical geneticist and I am attached with Sir H N Reliance Foundation Hospital, Mumbai. Yeah, and Dr. Pulvi Shah, a mentor of the Department of Dermatology at H N Reliance Hospital, Mumbai. So, uh, in December twenty uh, fourteen. the un decided to celebrate 13th june as the world or international albinism awareness day albinism is a disorder wherein an individual does not produce melanin because of a genetic defect i think a man would be a better person to tell us what exactly happens when we talk about albinism from a dermatological point of view so as dr tanmay said that melanin is not um, produced in the body um what we observe is a pale color skin because of no melanin light eyed eyes because of the melanin not produced and because of the light eyed eyes you have nystagmus that is to and fro movement of the um eye uh, sometimes lazy eye syndrome we observe because of the lack of melanin and redness or erythema of the uh, skin because there is no melanin so the uh, effect of the sun increases on the skin okay uh, so quickly talking about why albinism happens uh, from a genetic point of view albinism as i said is an inherited disorder that means it is a genetic disorder or a familial disorder which is passed on from one generation to the other we have seen that the people who are affected with albinism if they produce an offspring their child has a 50% chance of getting albinism because of this it is very important to check the individual who is affected with albinism to associate or to understand which gene is problematic which is le- leading to the problem and this helps us uh, to calculate the recurrence risk in the next generation when we talk about a recurrence risk it means that for how much percent of the chances are there that an affected individual's child will have albinism so when we talk about an affected individual ma'am can you tell us uh, how to take care or you know understand whether uh, these these people require any special treatment options when we talk about albinism see when we observe albinism is there is no melanin so there is no pigment in the skin now pigment help us to protect from the rays of the sun now when there is no pigment the chances of sun rays become very uh, strong or it affects the skin in a very bad way in a way that when you go out in sun without any sun protection you get erythema sometimes blister and if the sun protection is not taken then in the long run you can have skin cancer developing on the um, on the body like melanoma and uh, other skin cancerous uh, conditions because melanin does protect our skin from the ill effects of the sun so what we should do or tell the patients when they are uh, moving out because of course we all is a social life so patients are going to move out um in the sun so you have to protect wear full clothes protect it from the sun wear hand or a wear a cap or um uh, co- um cover the face with a cotton mask so that the ill effect of the sun does not affect the skin and of course visit the ophthalmologist because of the lack of melanin there are effects on the cornea and the um, iris because no pigmentation so there is a nystagmus that is a two and fro movement of the eye uh, number 2 there is a lazy eye syndrome what we call the eye becomes very lazy and they don't uh, uh, the focusing of the eye is not proper so always uh, tell the patients to visit a ophthalmologist to correct the see great thank you for that ma'am uh, i'm pretty sure there are uh, you know a lot of myths which are associated around albinism where people think that it is uh, a transmittable diseases uh, which you know uh, goes from one person to the other by touching or hugging or you know being in personal contact with these people uh here i would like to clarify that no this is not a a disease which transmits through touch this is not a disease which transmits through in person contact but this is a disorder which can uh, go from one generation to the other 
or a person might get affected by albinism by a de novo process that is something new uh, triggering in the gen uh, genetics which may lead to uh, faulty synthesis of melanin or absent synthesis of melanin leading to uh, albinism there are uh, many types of albinism when we talk about it through a genetic aspect uh, the most common are oculocutaneous albinism type 1 to 7 uh to distinguish a person uh from which type of albinism they are suffering from it is very important uh to perform a genetic test on the affected individual this will help us uh clarify or classify this person in the type of albinism which is going to help us uh prognosticate uh the future aspects or understand how this disorder is going to evolve further and also uh meeting a dermatologist to understand how to take care of the uh, person's skin Uh, especially when they are going to be exposed with the sunlight uh, annual checkups for the ophthalm uh, are definitely guaranteed there are a lot of uh, other associated symptoms which are seen in these syndromes and it is better to uh, see a clinical geneticist and a dermatology uh, a doctor of course uh, this is a multidisciplinary or a, you know this treatment or this management of this disorder is a multidisciplinary accept and this is very important uh, for everybody to understand that uh, you know going to a doctor and only taking certain treatment is not going to help you have to take care of the entire aspect uh, when it comes to albinism and uh, ma'am if you would I like to add something on uh, you know any other skin uh, care or anything specific that you need to a uh, watch out uh, for these kind of people yeah as dr tatnay said that we should do a regular checkup i also recommend a regular checkup to the dermatologist because of the fear of getting any melanoma or skin cancer because of the exposure to the sunlight um so regular checkup is required any pigmentary uh, changes or any papule which is pigmentary developing not pigmented in the sense reddish or brownish developing on the skin suddenly uh, always immediately go to the dermatologist for the opinion to rule out cancerous changes like melanoma and uh, um, always protect yourself whenever you go out and according to the myths are that there is no sun in the house but yeah the sunlight comes through the windows the uh, big uh, glass panels in the house so it's always better to uh, be in al uh, albino kid or albino person uh, the windows or the doors which are glass windows should be always covered by the curtains in the night time because that also is going to affect the skin great uh, ma'am i have one small question nowadays i have read a lot of articles where they say you know the led light that we use uh, that is also somehow you know um, emitting uh, radiations which are not good for the skin and you should also wear a sunscreen when you are indoors uh, so is that a, a true fact yeah yeah it is a true fact as well as especially for the albino on the right kid that you have to wear a um 24/7 you have to wear a, a sunscreen okay. on the skin because there is absolutely no melanin here we are not protecting for the uh, hyperpigmentation here there is no pigmentation is going to develop but the sun effect of the rays right. uva uvb um it the uh, what we call ir that is infrared rays infrared rays uh, all these are going to affect the skin yeah so uh, we have to prevent cancerous changes developing on the skin by because of the rays of the sun correct thank you for that ma'am uh, so i think uh, just to summarize or to understand there are a few things when we talk about albinism as a whole number 1 it is an inherited disorder it can pass on from one generation to the other and that is the reason doing a genetic test in the person who is affected with albinism is going to help us uh, calculate the recurrence risk it is also going to help us prognosticate the problem it is going to help us classify which type of albinism this is so that we can plan the treatment accordingly uh, seeing a, uh, a senior dermatologist or an experienced dermatologist who has dealt with many cases of albinism is very important uh, as ma'am has you know uh, told us that it is important to observe or a self observation uh, must be done whether there is any development of any red uh, papules or any red uh, demarcations on the body which may point towards an evolving cancer 
in such a case uh, you know they tell us uh, what is the prognosis of this which doctor should be meet what exactly is the treatment and just to summarize uh, this is not a disorder which spreads by touching and that is the reason we are here celebrating uh, the international uh, albinism of msd uh, so thank you ma'am uh, for joining us for this and all uh, who are watching today i hope uh, that we are well aware of this disorder and we take informed decisions uh, when it comes to albinism as a disorder thank you thank you